Also, did you attend the presidential session where the results of the podium trial that is also called Interact uh, 2 were presented? It was a, a phase three randomized trial of uh, investigating the addition of an anti PD1 retifanlimab to standard chemotherapy with the carboplatin plus taxol. Did you hear those data? Yes, and I'm very pleased that finally, in a very rare tumor, anal cancer, that something is changing. Right? We're discussing already, I think, for 10 years whether we should use cisplatin plus 5 acume versus carboplatin paclitaxel. And I think most people change now to carboplatin paclitaxel because of the added also tolerability. But adding immune therapy, we already knew for some smaller data, phase 2 trials in, the, let's say, the chemo refractory setting, that the immune therapy is active. Uh, but now we also know that when you add with AMTPD1 to chemotherapy, carboplatin taxol, that you see an increase in uh, PFS in this study. So to me, I think it's, it's another uh, change of routine practice as soon as the drug gets reimbursed, of course. I agree. Internal consistency, external consistency in the control arm. I think the data are very robust. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, there was... Another phase three trial presented. It was a metastatic colon cancer, which I was a bit surprised to, to see that it was a, a negative study. And this was the combination of TAS102 plus Ramucirumab. As you know, TAS102 plus Bevacizumab is something that most people tend to use in Turkey, like or fertilize. But so you would expect Ramucirumab to work as well. Any idea why this might be negative? Well, actually, if you look at the mm, results of the trial, yeah, yes, it's negative in terms of overall survival, but uh, there is a quite a clear signal, uh, also statistically significant in terms of progression for survival, disease control rate. So yes, the trial is negative and we should never recommend uh, Remusirumab plus TAS-102 in our daily clinical practice. And also these differences that are there are less clinically relevant than those observed in sunlight. But overall, I do not think that uh, these data do weaken the position of uh, trifluoridine tipiracil plus bevacizumab in our treatment algorithm for chemorefractory metastatic colorectal cancer patient. In these trials, uh, patients were more heavily pretreated, more of them had received more anti-angiogenic. I have no idea why among women there might be a higher benefit. I think no biological explanation, but similar results in other trials, uh, including ramucirumab. So we see, I think, that the trifluoridine tipiracil plus bevacizumab is still a standard option for uh, yeah, for On the other hand, there was another session where somebody in the room asked question about should we look more at women versus men? Uh, because we are not looking enough to the differences and also different treatment. But I think this is an example. We see it in some other trials uh, that's in women, but I agree it's a subgroup analysis, which is maybe hypothesis generating. Sure. There's nothing to uh, in use in the practice. And another interesting trial was POCHI. It's a proof of concept because it was a phase two trial on the less than 40 patients enrolled. First line. Proficient mismatch repair metastatic colorectal cancer. Should we use immune checkpoint inhibitors? This was a Capox plus bevacizumab plus pemprolizumab among patients with a high tumor infiltrate of uh, lymphocytes. So, which is your take from this trial? As you know, we look already for years now to use immunotherapy in MSS colon. Now we know for MSI already in MSS, so you know also from Italy there are nice trials showing uh, with uh, atezotide that there is some activity. And we know some response, we still don't know which ones. So I think this was a very good proof of concept. We know that if they are positive for TILS and they can be either measured, they have two different tests with immunoscope and another one, which I already forgot the name of the test. But still, if you have one of these tests positive, they could be included in the trial. I think what was promising is that you saw a lot of high, let's say, complete responses. Uh, I think the number, I don't know exactly by heart, but it was quite high. So I think it's promising, but we need to see it translated into an overall survival benefit, of course, before they are implemented. And of course, maybe also randomized trials. Uh, in Italy, we are conducting Y using immunoscore IC as a selection criterion. I think that uh, the way may be right to finally use immune checkpoint inhibitors in the yeah, and, and also one comment was, should we use a surgical resexual specimen or can we do it on a biopsy? Because it would be much interesting if we can test on a biopsy the tills and then see whether these patients can respond to immunotherapy. Okay.
Hi, Kiara. Hope you enjoyed the session as much as I did. So especially because I like to treat patients with the neoadjuvant therapy. And as you know, today there was a lot on neoadjuvant in colon cancer. So what were your thoughts on it? Actually, Hans, I think that um, it is one of the major highlights of this uh, Congress with regard to lower GI tract. Uh, in the niche 2, where patients with uh, microsatellite instable uh, localized uh, colon cancer were enrolled, two shots of nivolumab and one shot of ipilimumab allow achieving a 100% three-year disease-free survival. We already knew data in terms of a pathologic complete response, pathologic major response that were amazing, but now we have a longer follow-up that somehow confirms that this strategy is really worth, in my opinion, to be applied to clinical practice. But is this something that you already do in your uh, daily activity? Uh, I think, as you mentioned, there are a lot of patients ask about it and the high pathological complete responses or responses in general are very promising, but I think this 100% disease-free survival after three years is very good. Uh, we still have some open questions, I think, yeah, because you know that two other presentations were done, one with a combination with a LAF3 and an anti-PD-1, and another one with PEMBOL, and where you saw also very high responses. But it seems that the longer you give your immunotherapy or the longer you wait for surgery, the higher the responses are. That's also the idea that you had from the trials. Uh, yes, I think there are open questions. The combination or a single agent, uh, are we going to do a very, very short treatment or something longer in order to uh, achieve an even higher rate of pathologic complete response? And is the non-operative management something we are interested in that was not planned in this trials? And also the radiological selection at baseline of these patients, that is something uh, where the consensus is not uh, 100%. Which level of evidence do you think will be needed for regulatory authorities to approve the new adjuvant use of immune checkpoint inhibitors? I think it's a good question. It's also something that companies often ask, of course. Eh? So, uh, because we want, we would prefer randomized trials, I think, eh? because all these data is very promising that at the end we have to cure more patients and be set out. Uh, and probably surgery, I think. Well, they need it for quite some time, at least in colon cancer and don't have the tractal cancer. So I think we have to wait phase three data to be definitive about our uh, change of practice. The good news is that these trials are ongoing in the Western as well as in the Eastern regions. And so we will likely have uh, this uh, answer. Not very soon, but uh, not in uh, so much time. Yeah, looks promising.